After two action-packed episodes to begin their final season, Star Trek Discovery takes time to check in on their characters while also recycling a plot device from Deep Space Nine. And while Janal will probably not go down in history as one of the most memorable entries in the Star Trek catalog, there were plenty of cool moments and fun callbacks to discuss. Hey everyone, my name is Eric and welcome to What Did I Miss? Where today I'll be discussing the latest episode of Star Trek Discovery titled Janal and also looking for and explaining some of the easter eggs. Like I did last week, I will go through my review and breakdown of the episode first, and then list out all the references that I could find. So if you want to just jump to the end, there are time codes listed in the description of this video. But before I get into it, I would like to ask that if you do enjoy this content, to please hit that like button, which really does a lot to help support my channel. So first, let's go through my review and breakdown of the episode. In this episode, the crew of the Discovery head to Trill to find the next clue from the Progenitors. The clue leads them to a Trill symbiote named Janal, who is now in a new host. Since Grey is still on Trill training to be a Guardian, he reconnects with Adira, but both of them decide to end their relationship. Dr. Kolber is asked to act as a host for the consciousness of Janal and leads Burnham and Booker to the next clue. On the way, they are stopped by two aggressive alien monsters, but the pair are able to connect with them, which convinces Janal to give them a clue. Also, Tilly is asked to help Raynor connect with the crew, which ends up about how you would expect. This episode, more so than the last two, felt more like a filler episode. When you have a season-long storyline, it is difficult to keep the pacing consistent with each episode equally contributing to the overall narrative. When you are not able to pull that off with a story, it starts to feel like you are in a hurry-up-and-wait scenario, with some episodes being bangers and others taking a long time to do something very simple. In a lot of ways, this episode did feel like that to me, and even the characters start to voice their frustrations about the same thing. Specifically, when Burnham and Booker are looking for the clue with Janal. By the end, the Janal character does give a reason for why it took longer than it should have, but I still think that this episode could have been about 10 minutes long, and it was somehow stretched out to 50 minutes. I did think it was cool to see Grey, and it seems like this may be the last time we see them, unless they show up on the new series, Starfleet Academy. Since the symbiote was removed from Adira, and they do not have a relationship with Grey, I honestly feel like there is nothing interesting about Adira. I feel like last season, the idea was for Adira to replace Tilly's place in the cast, and it just didn't work out. So that is why we are seeing more of Tilly again this season, and of course, we're going to see Tilly, I'm sure, on the Starfleet Academy series. So yeah, I guess at this point, I'm just kind of tired of Adira. I don't think that they really add anything, and I really kind of miss that connection that they had with Grey, because I thought that that was really interesting, having like two people in one body. I thought that was really cool. I really, every time Adira comes on screen, I'm just like, ugh. Like, I don't even, <laughs> I don't even care what they have to say, because I don't think that Blue Del Barrio is a great actor, and I don't think it's really their fault. I think that they may have been put in a position that they weren't prepared for, and I wouldn't be surprised if Blue Del Barrio doesn't do any acting after Discovery is done. And again, I'm just, I'm not a big fan of the Adira character, and even less so that they don't have that connection with Grey anymore. I do think that Grey is an interesting character, the fact that Grey is a Trill, Grey has a symbiote, Grey is a robot, you know, like there's a lot of stuff going on with Grey that makes them interesting, whereas Adira is kind of just average to me. So hopefully we see more of Tilly, I'd like to see Grey again, and hopefully we see less of Adira. I thought Tilly was really the best part of this episode. Really, if nothing else, this episode was an example of why her character will be great on a series like Star Trek Starfleet Academy. Her attitude is infectious, and her emotional spectrum is realistic. I mean, she's definitely not, you know, she doesn't have it all together. She's definitely trying to make her life, you know, she's trying to make all the right choices and stuff. So she's not like an infallible character in any way, but her emotional spectrum like makes sense. She doesn't fly off the handle. She doesn't, you know, break down into tears every time something goes wrong. She does have emotions and they come out and she definitely like broke rank in this episode probably more than once, but it makes sense, especially in the context of Star Trek. So I thought Tilly was great. I really like her character. I really like that it seems like her character is back this season after a couple of seasons of it being a little bit muddled. And uh, I'm really excited if she's gonna go on to be in Starfleet Academy. I know that people have started to ask her about Starfleet Academy, and she does not want to talk about it. So that may be a sign right there that she is going to be a part of it. And I mentioned this in my review last week that I think that the producers on Star Trek know that Mary Weissman as Tilly is going to be on Starfleet Academy, but they don't want to say it yet because that reveals something about this season of Discovery. So I do think that that's going to happen, and I think it's a good idea. I think Mary Weissman as Tilly, I think that's a great character. 
I also liked that Star Trek Discovery brought back a plot device from DS9 and gave Culber a different personality for a while, although I would have liked Janal to have a stronger personality, like the ones that we saw in the DS9 episode Facets, and I'm going to talk about uh, Easter eggs here in a little bit, but I did like that part of the episode that Culber got to like step out of his you know safety zone or whatever and be a different type of character, but it wasn't that different. Like It was definitely different, like he played it differently, but... I, I like kind of in DS9 how some of the characters were so much different than the original character that they were. You know, if you've seen that episode, you know what I'm talking about. And if you haven't, Facets is a pretty good episode of DS9. I don't think it's reviewed very well, but I always liked it. I thought it was funny. And I think that that's why it's cool. You get to see actors who you're so used to playing a certain type of character, like step out of that and be a completely different kind of character. I love it when stuff like that happens. And I would have liked to see a little bit more of that with Culber. But I did like it. I thought that uh, I thought that, that was good. I liked the Culber character, so I'm glad that he got to step out a little bit and be kind of front and center. And I thought that he did a good job. I thought that bringing back that plot device from DS9 was a good idea because really, I think if you don't have that, again, that, that's another reason why I think that this is kind of a filler episode because the quest that they go on with Culber really has nothing to do with Trill. I mean, the fact that they were able to speak to a symbiote, I guess that's the connection. But ha finding those like two monsters that can cloak and fire plasma and stuff, that has nothing really to do with Trill. And they just added the Trill part to kind of make the episode a little more interesting. And they brought back the thing from DS9. So again, to, to add that to the episode, I think that even the writers knew like, we got to stretch this. We got to stretch this out. We got to add some stuff that's interesting here. I did kind of like some of that stuff, but all in all, I did feel like this was more of a filler episode. So while I did like parts of it, I don't think this episode was as good as the first two. But that's what I thought of this episode of Star Trek Discovery. Let me know in the comments, what did you think of it? Do you agree with me that it was a filler episode or was the episode enough to keep you interested? Let me know in the comments. So now here are all the Easter eggs and references that I noticed while watching the third episode of the fifth season of Star Trek Discovery titled Janal. As I just mentioned in my review, at one point Dr. Culver becomes a temporary host for the consciousness of a Trill during a ritual known as the Jahan Tara. This same ritual was performed during the Deep Space Nine episode titled Facets, where multiple members of the DS9 crew were temporarily transferred the consciousness of past hosts of the Dax symbiote. In this episode, we pay a visit to the bar on the USS Discovery, which we learn is named Reds. On Star Trek The Next Generation, the USS Enterprise-D also had a bar, which was named 10 Forward. The bartender at Red's is a Ferengi, which is no doubt a nod to the most famous bartender in Star Trek, Quark, who owned and operated his bar on Deep Space Nine. The bartender serves Tilly a Sluggo Cola. This drink was first mentioned on Deep Space Nine and was later referenced during the third season of Star Trek Picard. While Reno is getting interrogated by Raynor, she says that the last time she had to do this, she got chips. Reno is referencing her time being questioned by Starfleet in the Season 3 Discovery episode named Die Trying. During the negotiations that Saru and Sharina take part in, a member of the Soleil can be seen at the table. This cobra-looking species was first seen in the Next Generation episode titled Lonely Among Us. During one of Raynor's meetings with the crew, Lieutenant Christopher discusses his pet Tribble and reassures Raynor that it is neutered. I mentioned in my breakdown of the first two episodes that a Tribble can be seen in the Discovery hallway while Burnham and Booker are talking, and we know now that this Tribble must belong to Lieutenant Christopher. The next clue that the crew are looking for is said to be in Zenkethi space. This species was first mentioned on Deep Space Nine, but they are not seen until the game Star Trek Online. In that game, they are a lizard-like species that is augmented by the use of cybernetic technology. The events of the game are considered canon, but since so many years have passed, since the events in Star Trek Online, there is a good chance that if we get to see what this alien species looks like in the next episode, they will look very different than they did in the game. Towards the end of the episode, Burnham can be seen taking part in Vulcan meditation. She is doing almost the exact same pose as Spock did while he was meditating in the film Star Trek The Wrath of Khan. Also towards the end of the episode, we see that Maul has already infiltrated the planet Trill and that she put a small patch on Adira so that they can be tracked. This is very similar to what Spock did to Kirk before Kirk and McCoy beamed over to Kronos 1 in the film Star Trek The Undiscovered Country. Spock put the patch on Kirk so that the Enterprise could find them later after they had been arrested by the Klingon government. Well, that was everything I saw, but let me know in the comments if I missed anything. Thank you very much for joining me. Please remember to hit that like button before you go, and I'll see you next time on What Did I Miss?